Hi again, we're going to continue on here by looking at Renaissance writers. So this is part two. Uh, in part one, we had looked at Dante and Dante's Inferno, and we had also looked at Petrarch being the uh, father of humanism, but also writing many, many sonnets uh, about a woman named Laura. So let's continue on here. We need to talk about Boccaccio. Boccaccio is really interesting because he writes something called the Decameron, which you can see here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Boccaccio and the Decameron. Now, what the Decameron is about is it's a story that's told in Italy during the time of the Black Death. So as it goes, many people are dying of the Black Plague, it's moving through Italy, and Boccaccio decides to tell this story about seven women and three men who hide in a villa for two weeks, and they tell a different story each night. And this is where you kind of get that individuality of the characters, as mentioned the onset of this uh, lesson here, because... These stories are realistic. Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're sad. You get a wide variety of emotion that comes from these stories in the, the Decameron. And part of it, that's what would have made it very interesting, very alluring for a lot of readers during this time period. So the Decameron becomes a very famous work of uh, literature coming out of the Renaissance, but also connecting to the previous period of the Middle Ages and the Black Death. So the Decameron presents both tragic and comic views of life. By the time you're done with it, there's definitely a dichotomy of both sadness and death, but also sort of making fun of the idea that uh, people are dying of this plague. Here's a picture of the Decameron. You have your uh, ten people here who are living in this villa attempting to survive the plague. All right, our last author is Machiavelli. Machiavelli might be the most interesting of this group simply because of his guidebook, which he called The Prince. So let's talk about Machiavelli and The Prince. Now, I had skipped over previously in this the discussion questions, uh, and I did that intentionally because uh, if we were doing this in class, part of the discussion I would want to have is, what do you want from your leaders? What do you want from the people who, you know, are your kings or your emperors or your presidents, or even from a smaller level, your, your teachers, your principals, your coaches? Uh, and, and their leadership skills are going to be, um, you know, sort of universal, but at the same time, we kind of want different things out of different roles in people. And I don't want my coach to treat me the same way my president treats me. Well, Machiavelli wrote The Prince particularly aimed at that leadership. He was looking at people who were princes, you know, next in line to be king, and he wrote The Prince as a guidebook on how to rule. So The Prince explains how a ruler can gain power and keep it in spite of his enemies. Now, what Machiavelli is not concerned with in The Prince is telling you how to be a good ruler. Look at what I say here. He's more interested in explaining how a ruler can gain power and keep it. That doesn't necessarily mean this is a guidebook on how to be an awesome king or an awesome prince. So Machiavelli says that most people are selfish, they're fickle, they're corrupt. Uh, fickle is not a word we use that often and sort of means uh, people are easily manipulated, that they are not exactly... Uh, you know, thinking things out for themselves. Um, and there's no doubt there are people like this out there in society, but he said most people are selfish, fickle, and corrupt. And so he said in order to rule and gain power, a prince should not be concerned with what is morally right, but they should be concerned with what is politically effective. So if that means deceiving your people, if that means lying to your people, if that means really being dishonest with them, as long as it keeps you in power, Machiavelli would be all for it. So you can imagine how this would have some appeal to maybe the lesser moral, uh, power-hungry leaders out there uh, during the Italian Renaissance and beyond. Um, people still read The Prince today. Because I think we can also agree that 
um, the United States president, whether it's Obama or whether it's Bush or whether it was Clinton, whoever, you know, there's certain things that you don't always tell your people. There's certain decisions that you need to make that might negatively affect one group of people while positively affecting another. And I think Machiavelli was onto something here when he said, you know, sometimes you have to just not be concerned with what is morally right, but be more concerned with what is politically effective. So as I mentioned, this may involve misleading your people. I mean, I think we can all uh, agree that our government doesn't tell us everything. And we hope that they do so under the right circumstances. We hope they have the right intentions by not telling us things. Like, I want to believe if uh, aliens did land at Area 51, um, they're not telling us for a dang good reason. However, I don't know that because I haven't been told that. Um, so, you know, there, there are things the government doesn't tell us, and I think we all agree that that happens. Uh, Machiavelli would say, you kind of have to do that. There are things that you should tell your people, and there are things you shouldn't tell your people. Certainly their reactions might be problematic down the road. Of course, I'm a big uh, gamer. I love the Assassin's Creed series, so if any of you have played Assassin's Creed 2... Um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Machiavelli was in all of those as one of the side characters. Again, I'm just trying to bring pop culture into this uh, and to bring in characters that you might have seen somewhere else uh, and didn't even know that they are actually historical. Of course, as I mentioned in the onset of this, there are other uh, um, writers that come out of the Renaissance. We've already talked about William Shakespeare and his plays. We've already talked about Thomas More writing Utopia. So certainly uh, they are good examples of Renaissance writers. So our result in all of this, Renaissance writers wrote in vernacular and about people and life rather than just about God and set many trends that are still used by modern writers today. Certainly spiritual ideas, Christianity was alive and well in a lot of the things that these Renaissance writers wrote about, but that's not their primary focus. That wasn't the only thing they wrote about. You look at a lot of Shakespeare plays, it's uh, definitely not heavy on the Christianity side, uh, though it might be sprinkled in there from time to time. Um, and when we looked at uh, you know, the sonnets that um, Petrarch wrote, those weren't about Christianity, those were about Laura. Look at Machiavelli, that wasn't about Christianity. So we have a little bit of a change here as Renaissance writers start writing about other things rather than just about spirituality and God. All right, let's wrap this up by taking one more look at our constructive response question. The question says, citing specific examples, describe three of the Renaissance writers as well as what they wrote about. Of course, as I mentioned in the onset, we had talked about Thomas More and William Shakespeare in our roundtable activity that we completed a couple of days ago. Uh, so, you know, you could talk about Utopia, which was Thomas More's perfect society that he wrote about. You could talk about any number of William Shakespeare's plays, Hamlet, Othello, Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar, uh, Midsummer's Night's Dream. Uh, there's a lot of them, uh, maybe even a couple that you've even read yourself. But from this particular lecture, we learned about Dante and Dante's uh, Divine Comedy. Uh, we talked about Petrarch and his sonnets that he wrote for Laura. Uh, we talked about Boccaccio writing the Decameron, about those individuals who are telling stories in a villa while they try to survive the plague. And we talked about uh, Machiavelli and his book, The Prince, which was a guidebook on how to rule. So there I just gave you all six examples that we've seen in this unit. Your job would be, picking, uh, would be to pick three and to describe what they wrote about. Um, so you'd want to be able to do that in a short five to six sentence paragraph. So that's going to do it for us here today. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.